Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me today for episode number 92. I'm Kathy Rhodes, and I'm really thrilled. Whether you are on Facebook Live with me, or on the YouTube channel, or on a podcast channel, thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining and always connecting with me. I, I love running into all of you because I love hearing how you're relating to this content. So I'm going to share with you something here today. You know, the best way to learn and a way that I've connected with, with this content a little bit. But before I do, have you heard about the new Superpower training class that's coming out? I have an online program. I'm so excited. An online program that will be launched here later this month. It's called You Have Superpowers. And we all do. We all have superpowers, but many times we don't know how to use them. <laughs> how dangerous is that? We don't know how to use this. We don't even realize exactly what they are. So this online pro learning program is going to define it for you, help you figure out how you have been using it, how you want to use them, and how to truly maximize your growth. You know, many times when I talk to people, I was one of them. I want to grow. I want to learn. I want to, I want to, I want to do something. I just don't know how. So this is what this program is going to help us all do. It's going to help us all grow and do exactly what God made us to do here on this earth. All right, so watch. Watch for more details here coming real soon about the launch of You Have Superpowers. All right, this is episode 92, podcast episode 92, and it's called The Best Way to Learn. So what kind of learner are you? Are you a visual learner or an audible audio learner or kinesthetic learner? That's the uh, fancy word for saying you like to do. That's how you like to learn. Just it, you know, This is something where a, a child might show you a toy. And you say, oh, let me see that. That's because you are wanting to learn by doing. That's your kinesthetic side. All right. Well, I personally believe there's no better way to learn than to experience. And you know what the best experience is? The best opportunity that we have in life to experience is travel. It's, it's getting into the, the land and the communities and the environment of a new neighborhood, a new location that you don't live in. What a powerful way to learn. When it comes to experiencing and, and truly attaching all of our senses to that experience, that's where everything starts connecting. You know, think about seeing the full surroundings, not just what's in a picture. You get to see what's off to the right and left and up and behind. Or, or smelling the aromas of a community. I remember, I remember getting off the airplane in Hawaii and just being wowed because the smell that's flowing through the open air airport was the most beautiful, flowery smell I've ever smelled. And I don't really like the smell of flowers. <laughs> this was amazing. Thankfully, I found a really good lotion that I could take home with me to remind me of that smell. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but also, just, just think about hearing of the sounds, the, the different kinds of birds or the different kind of animals, or, or maybe it's lack of noise that you hear when you're on vacation. No traffic, no shouting, no construction, <laughs> or, or even the feel of the culture. Just the feeling of a location. You can't get that from, from a, a TV show or a, a news article or a picture. You can't get that unless you're there. So this past week, I am returning home from a trip to Puerto Rico. Now, before traveling to this beautifully warm climate, all I really knew about this island was that it got hit pretty hard a few years ago by a massive hurricane. In 2017, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico head on. I mean, it covered the whole island. That's all I really knew. Well, after being in Puerto Rico, I have so much more appreciation 
for for the people and the community because this storm sat on top of the island for 12 hours in the middle of the night. These people watched the walls of their home move, praying that their house can take the abuse, right? I mean, the fear, the anxiety, and then when, when the hurricane passed, now all the destruction, the destruction that they had to clean up. We, we saw buildings that haven't been touched since before the hurricane. They're still, they're still totally demolished, but they haven't been cleaned up. They haven't been rebuilt, nothing. We saw trees that, you know, definitely were affected by the hurricane. There's still some missing branches, some lopsidedness a little bit. Now, we also saw trees that looked like the hurricane didn't threaten them at all. It was, it was no big deal. <laughs> There's still really tall palm trees <laughs> and really tall trees in the rainforest that are still really tall. So, so to see this and to hear the stories, to talk to the people that lived through it, to realize that after the hurricane passed through, many of them went four months without electricity or tap water in their home. Some people went up to a year without these amenities in their home. I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. And I know, I know America, you know, we sent people over electricians and, and linemen and all of that. To, but you can only do so much in a day. Now, I did have a friend who stayed in Puerto Rico a year or two after the the hurricane went through. She was just staring, staying at an Airbnb, Airbnb overnight as her cruise ship was coming to port. And she said that uh, it was 24-hour construction. And they don't really have windows. They It's just kind of like slats in the window. So you heard the jackhammer moving, going off. You heard the yelling of the construction workers. You heard the banging. You heard the everything for 20. And the lights, the lights were very bright, 24-7. Well, talking to the the people of the community, they wanted it. I mean, they they needed these amenities so much quicker. But we can only do so much in a day. Okay, so so besides talking to people and seeing hurricane destruction and, and and appreciating all of the work that that the people have done to get back up and going, we also got to experience how they lived or how they do live, like like their food. Mm -hmm. So we got to enjoy some of their food. One of them is called mafungo. Mofongo is fried green plantains mixed with some garlic and some other stuff. Now, a plantain is like a miniature banana, but the yellower it gets, the sweeter it gets. So they 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 make this ma mash, <laughs> mush, <laughs> with garlic and, and such, and then they kind of form it in like a huge muffin and fill it. They fill it with veggies or any kind of meat or seafood that you want uh, with kind of a sauce. Yeah, so we got to experience mofongo. Mm -hmm. Kind of yummy, right? Um, they have ice cream there. Thank goodness. Got to experience that. I also got to experience a limber. A limber is kind of like a homemade popsicle push-up. So it's in a little Dixie cup, and it's got wonderful coconut flavor. I think I had a pomegranate po coconut, and it's ice, and then you just push on the Dixie cup, and boop, it pops up like a push-up, right? And and, and and you you just you eat it. I mean, hello, who doesn't need some nice icy treat on a hot afternoon while you're walking through the rainforest? <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to experience the rainforest as well. So the surroundings, not only the beach and the heat, but also the rainforest and, and the temperature difference. And then we learned that the people who live in the mountains and, and by the rainforest, they don't have air conditioning because it gets so nice and cool. Now, they do have humidity. So, you know, I think I would still want some air conditioning, but the, their houses are built for that. Their, their, their communities are built for that. There's also, uh, their homes are handed down by generation. And I thought that was kind of neat to, to have that kind of history and that, that that family focus, um, which is different, it's different than than here where I live in the Midwest. Uh, then, oh, this was kind of fun. We went to a beach on a Sunday, which is the weekend for the community, right? And I guess everybody goes to the beach on the weekend, and it was very busy. But this is a beach that had some shops, like a lot of shops along the beach. And there was a man who drove around the strip. It was kind of like a 
around and around the shops was the strip. He had a, a Jeep. It was very a yellow Jeep, maybe, I think it was, or red. I can't even remember the color I should because it was very a very fun open air type of Jeep. And he was blaring Puerto Rican music. And every time, I mean, it was so loud, I he must have had earplugs in. Every time he'd drive by wherever we were, it was, it kind of gave me a little bit of a headache. But when you look at him, he's smiling. I mean, truly, his mission is to spread joy <laughs> through pro Puerto Rican music. It was so fun. It was so wonderful. And I guess he comes every single day, holidays included, weekends included, and he just drives around. Even with gas prices at $5 a gallon, he was driving around. <laughs> Okay, so what else did we experience? Well, the language, their number one language is Spanish. Number two is English. Kids learn both, you know, until all the way through all grade school ages. Uh, and then, of course, there's the beach and the sun rises and the sun sets and the weather and the rain, a little bit, the heat, the humidity, the bugs. There are a few little bugs. Yeah, we got to experience it all. And it was beautiful. I have such a greater appreciation for Puerto Rico. Now, granted, regardless of how much I, I, I visited the communities of Puerto Rico, I was still a vacationer. I get it. I, I wasn't truly in the community. I wasn't truly living in the community. I, I, but I didn't really see and feel it all. I wasn't in every type of community, every part of the island. However, I just have such a greater appreciation for this far east island of the United States. This island is closer to South America than it's to the USA, but it's still considered part of the USA. So amazing. I can point out this island on a map. I can tell you the difference between a banana and a plantain now. Couldn't do that before I left for vacation. I feel like I'm just a little more connected with this southern part of my world. Traveling is the best form of education. Traveling is going to connect your senses and your emotions with the facts that you can read in a book or that you can read online. So what new community are you going to connect with this year? Have you thought about it? Now, many times people think about vacations quite often, especially in the summertime, right? But, but truly, what new community do you want to connect with this summer? Maybe you'll choose something local. Maybe it's truly a community or a neighborhood in your city. Or maybe it's a city in your state. Maybe it is close to home or maybe it is far away. Travel somewhere. Somewhere that you've never visited before. Choose a corner of our world that you get to experience and learn from. And then make sure you share with everybody so that we all can experience what we can't read in a book. So that we all can experience that personal story, that personal connection. Have fun. Enjoy. Take lots of pictures. Post about it. I can't wait to hear all about your adventures. And we'll see you next week on podcast number 93.